Action News, Drew Carey, which was a shot with Bane the Guy, stand-up comedy by Jackie Fabulous, and sitting in with the posse all night, Don Felder. Percussionist back there? That's Lenny Castro, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you can remember him. He's the Castro we like. <laughs> and a guitarist we love. The legendary Don Felder, ladies and gentlemen. Of the Eagles. Let me tuck it and hold it. Thanks for my guitar, man. Yeah, yeah legendary ex Eagles guitarist. You gonna do some stuff later? Oh yeah. Oh okay. You and Mr. Castro turn this place out. Rock me until my soul can't handle it no more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you uh, did you watch Jay Leno last night? I did. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, I I have to be honest with you. I called my mother, and I heard Jay in the background. <laughs> yes. Yes. I called my mother. At like 11:15, I. I'm Arsenio Hall. <laughs> and you know what? Hey, I keep reading about the Olympics in Sochi. If Sochi gets any nastier, they're gonna have to rename it Barstow. What is up? <laughs> Is up. The Olympic Games have become Sochi, and uh, it reminds me of so many great memories in the past. Uh, you remember the miracle on ice in Lake Placid where we beat the Russians? You remember that? Remember the American bobsled victory in Salt Lake City? God, what will our memories be from Sochi? <laughs> yes. Things like that. It's crazy. I've talked about how messed up things are in Sochi, especially the toilets, of course. Now, here's the latest picture I found. Look at this. Don. <laughs> Do they have the IQ of navel lint over there? The toilet seat is installed upside down. <laughs> Ladies, at least now the men will have an excuse for getting pee all over the toilet. <laughs> With our aim, men have the worst aim, you know. The worst aim, ladies. You must be a wife. Are you? Yes. Okay. Because you have the look of, oh, the aim is just horrible. I, I, I think it just feels so good we black out or something. When we come to, it's like, oh, oh, shit. I got to clean this up. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yesterday on the show, I showed an item on the Russian menu at one of their restaurants. And, uh, gosh, this jumped out at me today. Their English isn't great, you know? I think they meant assortment. But what they wrote was, ice cream <laughs> in the ass. <laughs> ice cream in the ass. So today I saw this picture <laughs> from a buffet in another Sochi restaurant. Now, the word I think they're going for is pronounced in Russian, sok. But it's spelled like this. <laughs> yes. Juice. I don't know, the Russians. <laughs> I guess with this kind of juice, it's great after ice cream and eggs. <laughs> I guess I, I don't know what to make of these menus. <laughs> this is perfect. Mm. Oh, gosh. Yep. My first guest was a great 
stand-up comedian, a skilled improviser, and the host of Price is Right. We love him on Price is Right. And he loves doing it. Go play the thing. Please welcome Cleveland's number two son, <laughs> Drew Carey! Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, what's your favorite thing about Cleveland? What do you miss about Cleveland? Uh, the low, low rent. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference. Yeah, man. I miss everything about Cleveland. I go back there, you know, whenever I can. Mm -hmm. I went back there for a couple of Browns games. Don't ask me why. Uh, it was just to be sad, I guess. Uh, I, the, uh, but we still love them. You know what? I, I know, weird, honestly, but I, I still, have you seen the green room? I miss the snow. Oh, yeah. Do you, you, can you believe it? I really do. It's fun. I don't know what it is, but something about getting up and shoveling snow before you go to work. Yeah. You feel like a man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You feel like uh, people like complain, go, how do you get up and shovel the snow? It's like, hey, you get up and you go to work and think, like, hey, extra 10 minutes, you get a little muscle in there, and you feel like a man in the morning before you go to work. Yeah. It's a good feeling. You know what I miss? I miss in every car where we're from. There is a stick with a brush on one end and an ice scraper on the other. Yeah. I missed that little tool. I got a, I got a rental car and they had one in there and I was like, yeah, that's right. You have to have it. Yeah, we know that. Just in case. Oh. I had to drive to, I had to drive my, I had a rental car, you know, and I had to drive back to the airport and they had a big snowstorm and it was like uh, white knuckle. I was like terrified driving back and they, they were on the news saying, if you can't, if you don't have to drive today, don't go out on the road. And I was driving like 25 miles an hour sliding, mm -hmm. you know, all the way to the airport. And uh, I was talking to him, like, and it was great. <laughs> it's about terrified driving, and you never get used to it. You just have to just get, you get used to terrified driving, you know, and that's about it. I wonder if I could still even do it. Remember when we were young, we were taught steering the direction of the skid? Uh, I was, all those I got to the airport, I was covered with sweat. <laughs> Exhilarated, you know. Um, you threw out a pitch at an Indians game? Yeah. I'm afraid, man. That's pressure. Yeah, because you don't look like an idiot. Uh, I was, I was playing. Uh, I, was, I had to throw out a pitch in Indians game. I don't. I'm not a really good thrower of anything. I'm not an athlete that way. And uh, I was playing catch with one of the Indians, and uh, Jim Tomey was playing catch yeah. with me. And he's huge. And uh, when he would throw the ball at me, all I heard was, and then the, the ball hit my glove, and my hand hurt the rest of the day. And I would throw the ball to him, and it bounced on the ground. <laughs> And it was like second to first, you know, it wasn't that, it was 60 feet, it wasn't that far. Yeah. And he would like, or 30 feet, whatever, and he would bend down and pick it up and throw it to me. And the, ah, whatever, my hand hurt. And the pitching coach came over and said, do you want me to show you how to throw like I can teach the little kids? <laughs> and I go, yeah, please do. And he go, you got to throw and hit the giant in the chin and hit the little guy in the head. And that's how you have to throw. You have to wind it. And I said, oh, thank you. So I was able to throw the pitch and get it over the plate. Yeah. But if it wasn't for that guy, it would have been just like bounced on the ground. So, Drew, you, you love sports. <laughs> like a girl, stop. Like, you <laughs> love sports, but you didn't play. You weren't an athlete. I, uh, not really. I wrestled a couple years in high school, but I was no good. I never made even JV or anything. I got beat up all, you know. Yeah. Like, I was the practice dummy in school. I was no good. And look at you now. Athletes. Yeah. But my bobblehead has a beer belly. Well, <laughs> it's an old model. Yeah, I still got a little bit of belt. Yeah, it's an old model. Because you're the only person outside of Indian players that has one of these. Yeah, it's pretty cool being a non-Indian player to get a bobblehead. They were really, they've always been super nice to me, you know. Yeah, or, or at least I guess that's what they told you, that you were the only one. <laughs> is, there a, is there another that I know? Uh, oh. oh, there. Hey, look at that, man. <laughs> um, they haven't accepted it yet. <laughs> but there is one. That's quite a, quite a flattering. Uh... <laughs> okay, it's actually my Kevin Garnett bobblehead, but that's right. That's right. That's one of the as popular as, as you in Cleveland, man. I bet you could do it. I mean, I think me and you and. Uh... <laughs> I think that you, me, and Halle Berry ought to go back to Cleveland one time, all at the same time. And that would be cool. Start demanding some things. Yes. 
<laughs> before we go to break, I got something special for Drew. I told you I did. Guitarist Don Felder, former Eagle, is going to take us to break playing Hotel California for my homie. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> for Valentine's Day. No, this is on YouTube. No. They won't understand, but uh, we're also talking about the Eagles. Yeah. And uh, Kenny King's. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny King's is a restaurant in Cleveland that doesn't exist anymore. But you can get KFC chicken there. Uh, KFC, the famous chicken brand, that should buy an ad on their Arsenio show now. Because <laughs> uh, everybody needs a little KFC. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know my fans like chicken. I'm not supposed to say that, but... <laughs> Come on, now. Come on. The colonel cooks it well, but you know we the origin of chicken. My fans like chicken. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes Everybody chicken. Likes chicken. Uh, so uh, you could get, it was a, a chain of restaurants only in Cleveland. They had a, uh, a license to serve KFC chicken in a diner. So you could go get a, a sit-down dinner with KFC. It was, uh, it was great. I, re I always wondered how that worked, especially when I got here. They got in early on the game when, when the Colonels just knew. And they, a, <laughs> you know, and they, they somehow slicked it so they got, you know, it was in there. So uh, I used to go to this Kenny King's place all the time, and there was a big Cleveland thing, mm -hmm. and everybody would go to KFC, and I got my only, one and only fight my whole life. I wrote about it in my book, uh, Dirty Jokes and Beards. You can get it on Amazon.com for like 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Get old copies for 25 cents, and uh, yeah, these guys walked out on their chicken check. It was like a, it was like five bucks for this yeah. chicken, and it was a to-go order. Three guys that were drunk, and uh, they were about to walk. They, they were like, hey, "My old lady," blah blah blah. You yeah. know, sitting there having my coffee, and they were about to walk out. And a guy put his check and sh put his check in, a, in his shirt and walked out. And I went to the waitress. I go, "Did they pay?" She went, "No." And well, I you was, saw this on your I own. Saw, yeah. Got involved. Yeah, and I was in the I was in the Marine Reserves then, and, and uh, I had my short hair and my glasses like this. Yeah. I can't make a big deal out of it. <laughs> I kept the commies out of Ohio. That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my whole Marine Corps experience. And uh, so I followed him out, and I said, "Hey, you didn't pay the check." And the guy's like, "What are you talking about?" Like I saw you walk out. And he goes, uh, "What are you a cop?" And I go, "No, but I saw you walk out on your check." He goes, I'll knock your glasses off your face. And I go, I'll take my glasses off right now. And then he, boom, like plowed into me. And we got in this big fight in the middle of Kenny King's. Yeah, we knocked out all the dishes, broke all the dishes, knocked over a bus thing. Uh, and we were like, I remember he tried to like get at my eyes. I remember biting him. And uh, <laughs> we were like swearing and calling each other this and that. You know, names mm -hmm. you call people when you're fighting them. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> The, uh, the other guy was old, so it was just like the two younger guys that were bigger. And the, the cooks came out, and I remember I, I was like thanking God in my head because the, the, the two cooks came out on the other big guy, mm -hmm. and he was just like, uh, uh, and they like yeah. knocking the cooks off, and I was like, oh, my God, I got this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, like five Parma cops show up. It was in Parma. So five Parma cops shows up, and they, they break up the fight, and the whole place is busted up. B bus tray, and the King Kings had to buy everybody's dinner. Oh, but I just should have let them walk out with the $5 check. Yeah. And... <laughs> And after all this, I'm in this, my only fight, you know, and the, this guy comes over to the table with the cop. This guy was swearing in front of my kids. He's really? Yeah. I was like, eh, eh. 
I'm trying to do a good thing. What a, you yeah. a thankless deal. Yeah. And I called him a <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talk about taking off your glasses and, and you took them off. I've never seen you without your glasses. That's such a signature look. This is, see, that's, uh, wow, look I'm at you. I'm out now. Yes, I'm drewed out now. Wow. Wow. Man. And you know what? You've worn these a long time, but that's a hip look. Now, there are people who wear those and don't even need glasses because it's cool. Yeah. So, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. You ever have people, I forget who the originator is. Yeah. I mean, but do people come up to you and, and, and have a, like, I know you have a unique car I've seen uh, on TV. I was in, I was in a, uh, this happened to me in Cleveland. I was at a, I was at a, we'll call it a bar in yes. Cleveland. Uh -huh. And uh, I was talking to these two. And you're very quick. We'll call it a bar. That was brilliant. No that glasses. And I'm talking to these three women at this <laughs> bar. And they kept on saying, what do you do? And I'm like, don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kept on saying, what do you do? And I changed the subject. And yeah. finally, they come on, what do you do? And I go, all right, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the TV business. You know, yeah. So I figured they would get it. Yeah. And, uh, oh, oh, really? Uh, what do you do in the TV business? Yeah. And I go, and this is like a couple years ago. I'm famous in Cleveland, believe me. Yes. Oh, believe us. Yeah. And so I go, I, I go, I, I'm a, I'm a game show host. And they go, oh, really? Which game show? Wow. The Price is Right. And I go, I go, uh, The Price is Right. The Price is Right. Mm -hmm. Like that. And the woman looks at me, she goes, ah, oh, I thought uh, Drew Carey hosted The Price is Right. Wow. <laughs> he is Drew Carey. And I go, I go, it is he to whom you are speaking. That's exactly yes. what I said. Yes. Then I put on the glasses. There you go. Yeah. That's him. Without the glasses, you look like Craig Kilborn. <laughs> So he's a good-looking guy! <laughs> <laughs> hey, did they offer you the prices right initially and you turned it down? Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I've been taking uh, acting lessons and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I was kind of retired, but I thought I'll take acting lessons and maybe do a couple roles here and there, do something, uh, do something different. And uh, I'd done a pilot for a game show, a nighttime game show called The Power 10 that was on for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got back on the radar, because I was off everybody's radar. I was like completely gone, out of show business. And, um... You know, a friend of mine was doing this pilot, and I did it. And CBS, that, it was for CBS, and that's how I, they heard about me again. And uh, so I, I was driving from New York, uh, and I got a call from my agent on my phone. And he goes, I got the most interesting call from CBS casting. And I thought to myself, like, oh, hey, and they got a CSI or, you know, <laughs> whatever. And they were like, how would you like to take over for uh, Bob Barker on The Price is Right? And I was like, what? Like, that was the complete <laughs> opposite yeah, yeah. of what I had in my head. Yeah. I said no. And then uh, a couple weeks later, after the... Power 10 got picked up. I got another call. Hey, uh, CBS called again. They want you to do. Uh, so after about the price, right? I go, how much do they pay? We don't know. Uh, what's the hours? We don't know. I will find all that out. Maybe I'll have a meeting with them. And then, that, then I found out, and then I, how much the money was and stuff, and I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you love doing it. I love. It. Yeah. Great show. I mean, I, honestly. Everybody's so friendly there, and the, uh, the people there are so much fun. It's like the greatest thing I've ever done. It's like being high all the time. Ah, ah. You are one of those people in Hollywood who believes that marijuana should be legal. And you're not necessarily a pothead. No, not necessarily. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't see it. It shouldn't be illegal, you know. Yeah. I don't know why, but... Uh, I'm glad I owed a soccer team up in Seattle. That's all I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know what's good when you're stoned? What? Kenny Kings. Bring that chicken out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, no, no, I'm just oh. kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm really yes, happy. I do. Oh, right. <laughs> I love we'll be back with more Drew Carey.
such a situation. Um, a lot of people don't know that Drew Carey has an honorary doctorate from Cleveland State University. Yes. Yeah, yeah. From their dental school. Really? Yeah. I spoke at the, I was like, spoke at a graduation there or something. Yeah. That's cool. Well, um, <laughs> Before uh, the show started, we asked the audience if they had any questions for you. And that's why we call this segment, Ask Dr. Drew. Karen. Okay. okay. We have audience members. Rebecca is first. Okay, our first question for Dr. Drew. Karen. Uh, it comes from Rebecca. Rebecca, what's your question? I just wanted to ask him, why do men wake up with erections? Because we can. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and Better than waking up without an erection. <laughs> That's why. I think she probably... Because we need something to do after we hit the snooze alarm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, and Morel, is that your name, sir? Are you Morel? What? No, just smoking marijuana kills off brain cells. The smoky marijuana kill off uh, brain cells. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mariah. Uh, Jackie, step right up. Step right up, Jackie. What's your question for Dr. Drew? Karen. Hello, Dr. Drew. I'd like to know what can I do to get past the two minute mark in bed with my partner? She wants to get past that two minute mark in bed with her partner. This was on you, my friend. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> I'd get yourself another partner. <laughs> <laughs> That's my very Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, uh, it... <laughs> you can, I mean, you, you could actually, like, s stop it, like, a minute 45. <laughs> In all seriousness, stop at a minute 45 and then, you know, go back to something else and then start again and go back, you know, and do it that way over and over. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes over and over equals six minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's why you had that doctorate. Yeah. Math skills and stuff like that. Somebody, somebody asked me once the price is right if I had any kids and I went, not the way I do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great response. Okay, young lady, you're next. What's her name? Uh, right. Shelly. That's Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Hi. So, Dr. Drew, yes, how can you tell if a person is faking an orgasm? Uh, Shelly, to be honest, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> That's on you, Shelly. That's your business. <laughs> I'm doing my business, and you do your business. Exactly. You know what I mean? I can't please everybody. You know what I mean? If you can't be honest with me, then we, we got no future together. <laughs> are you are you married? Yes. Do men fake orgasms? Not that I'm aware of, but what are you gonna do? Maybe like, some maybe water someone else. <laughs> yes, men do fake. Ah, ah, sploosh. Price is Right every weekday on CBS yeah. at 11 a.m. And see him live Valentine's Day in Medford, Oregon at the Katerian? Is that how? Uh, Katerian Theater. Yes, yes. that's right. And, and, and February 15th in Salem, Oregon at the Ellsnore Theater. We'll be right back with Charlemagne.